Well, today, as requested, I'm here at my father-in-law Rick's, and we're going to check out his homemade DIY attic elevator. A lot of people saw this in a previous video, and they wanted a closer look. So stick around if you want to see it. Dig DIY. Several years ago, my wife's parents followed through on a lifelong dream and built a new home on a nicely wooded lot. My mother-in-law spent years planning and thinking about exactly what she would want the new house to look like and how it would be furnished inside. And my father-in-law spent years planning and thinking and daydreaming about exactly what he would want in his shop. Even at the time of construction, there were still a lot of questions and decisions to make in regards to the interior layout of the shop, but he had decided on two key features that would be for certain years ago. Number one, there would be a spacious upstairs storage area for all the things that a man likes to keep. And number two, there would be an elevator to get it all up there. Well, I think that anyone that has storage upstairs has definitely thought about wanting an elevator. Or at least I do. I have a lot of upstairs storage that's hard to access. You know, I cut a garage door in the upstairs of my mm -hmm. barn. So I wish I had this, but it seems fairly simple. What? What did you use to, to build this? What's the main components? Well, probably what makes it happen is these old barn door tracks. Some people call them cannonball tracks, but I don't know what the real name for them is. I scrounged them someplace. I think I'd gotten some doors and got them along with them. And wasn't using them for anything for 30 years and finally decided that was what to use for this and it works really well. So you actually, you had those, I thought you went out and bought those just for this. You had them for a long time. Yeah. So those are old stock. Very old, yeah, but still in really good shape. They're not all rusty like they would normally be. They've been stored. Now yeah. can you still go buy those? Oh yeah. Can you go buy the barn tracks? Yeah, right. yeah. So I've, I've looked at a few other YouTube videos on building a homemade attic elevator and they use this Unistrut and you gotta get the little trolleys that go in the Unistrut. They've got little wheels that uh -huh. that you can attach to. But these, I think the barn door track is an awesome solution because you can buy the trolleys already for them. That's what the doors hang from is the trolleys, right? Yep. This building was built knowing that he wanted to install the elevator in it. So the trusses were pre-engineered to accommodate for the large hole that's in the, in the ceiling here because otherwise to do that big of a hole in a ceiling that spans this wide of a distance would be quite a bit of after the thought engineering. So fortunately this was all done ahead of time, right? Yeah, I, I told the framers to just leave a five foot square hole. Really? Yeah. So the main components then are the barn door track and what's lifting it up and down? Well, the, uh, the hoist is up above the ceiling of the upper room, up in the trusses and braced and so that all the weight's buried on this wall. Okay. So this side is the woodworking side. The other side of the wall is the metalworking side. Mm. You can kind of see how this was built to accommodate this space in the floor too. A lot of lumber up there, huh? There is a lot of lumber up here. These are like these double joists too. This yeah. is quite the pre-engineered trusses. Yeah. So she's strong enough. He basically has these two by fours coming down from the truss that are tied in with the wall. So that way all the weight is transferred to the wall itself. And then the wall is supported by another wall on the first story. So this, uh, this thing is not putting any pressure on the trusses. It's actually all transferred to the floor downstairs. Yep. So the platform and the, the framework are all just wood. I decided to go all wood. Initially, I was going to use steel, uh, but I thought that's just going to create a lot of weight and, and be tougher. And I thought I could do it quicker with steel. I had some scrap wood around, which all of this is scrap, except a couple of these two by sixes I did have to buy new. Um, it just, and you might at first thought think, why in the world would you build it out of wood? But it is very strong. I'm not worried about it a bit. Um, where did you get the hoist? Harbor Freight, I think. Is it a Harbor Freight? Yeah. Hoist? The hoist is rated for 700 and some pounds, I believe. Okay. Uh, with the single cable coming down, if you loop it and gain mechanical advantage, 
It'll do 1300 and some, I think. But I chose to just do the single for the little better speed up and down. It would have went pretty slow. And I never need to move more than 700 pounds. And I've probably had pretty close to that on here. Mm -hmm. I try to keep the majority of the weight close rather than out here. But this chain's 800 pound test chain. So that's 1600 pounds that the chain would take. And it does go all the way through. So yeah. So the design is actually pretty simple. I mean, you've got barn door tracks stood up on end. You've got the barn door trolleys that normally roll up and down and you've got, a, got them attached to a wooden frame the same way that the, the barn door trolleys would attach. And then the hoist just lifts it up and down in the tracks. I mean, yeah. it's a very simple design. Um, if most of your weight is up here close, there's really not even that much stress. Yeah. They're just guides. And could have probably gotten away with only two of them, but I had enough to do three, so I did three. Yeah. Little does a little good, a lot ought to do a lot of good. <laughs> so. All right, well, let's take a look upstairs. All right. Oh, we gotta we gotta show them this door. This door is super cool. So this door is on a pulley system with a weight, and it just it works beautifully. It's got a seal all the way around it to keep the heat from rising up into the attic during the winter. And the the one thing I find really interesting, and I had to have explained to me, is that there's two sets of weights. So there's a weight here and then another weight up here. So why, why the two weights? Well, the theory behind it is that it's not an equal force that you need all the way through the arc of the door, oh. 90 degrees. So when you first start opening, it needs more weight because it's heavier because it's laying down. When it gets to this point, it's pretty easy. So all you need is the second set of weights. So it makes it so effort. If you had the full weight, the whole distance, it would come up to about here and if you think of all that weight up high it would still be pulling it really hard so that relieves some of the pressure yes. coming so up on it flop up really hard. so it's kind of like a two-stage door yes. yeah something super simple like this this is the kind of stuff i like and what rick is super good at is just using the practical in in real life so this is nice and he's got a little it, it made a pretty big clunk so oh, i put that little pad there that just a I foam pad it keeps it quiet and, and I guess for what it's worth the location of the pulley is fairly critical uh, it needs to be offset just enough that when it comes up it just stands by itself ah otherwise it either pulls it too far or it doesn't it, it ends up standing like this if you put so, the pulley right even oh, so. so it needs set back just enough if you want mm -hmm. it to stand and this door actually is fairly heavy. It's three quarter yeah. plywood and framed and everything. But what the weight does for you is that with a couple fingers, you can just open it easily. Yeah. And normally what you would do, I guess, is frame this whole area in with walls and then have a door that you open right. at the top. And that just seemed overkill to me. And I kind of like doing stuff like this anyway. Yeah. <laughs> I did a video about my shop a uh, few weeks prior to this video. And I showed that I insulated my shop with three inch styrofoam oh. that I got second hand. It was, it, was, it was actually out of an old church and I picked up a whole load of it for nothing basically. Well, that's what this three inch styrofoam is that you see here at Rick's. It's all that leftover styrofoam from, from yeah. my shop project. So. Good stuff. Well, that door is super cool. All right. Okay. Well, let's take a closer look at the elevator itself and see how it comes up through the floor. And this was all predetermined to be storage space. So it's, it's well thought out. He's got a shelf down the center. It's 24 foot wide. There's a wall underneath the center downstairs that supports uh, the shelving that he's got here in the middle. So obviously you've got a safety rail in place up here, which is a, a smart idea. And this two by four just pops out of here. Yeah. 
and so you can easily unload once the elevator is up top. A couple of things I thought it was worth pointing out was that you have your hoist control upstairs. You never dropped it down into the into the downstairs. And we had talked about that a few times. Why why do you want to leave it up here? Well, it's not designed for people, just stuff and with only one control right here, you have to stand here and operate it. You can't be riding it up and down. So, um, and that keeps the grandkids. I know of two granddaughters that would be riding this every time they were at grandma and grandpa's, if they could get access to the switch. So they've begged several times to, <laughs> to ride it. No, and he's only let one person ride the elevator. And my dad came up at once because he can't go up the stairs he's 92 and doesn't get around very well so he wanted to see the upstairs and so we brought him up on a chair i think at 92 you get a pass <clears throat> yep yep and yep. it worked fine but i just don't want to make a habit out of it yeah well that makes sense well since you have such a great stairway access to this space anyway you can load up the elevator downstairs then come upstairs run the button unload it and then it, it's parked in the up position yes, anyway right you stow anyway. it up here anyway yes. so yeah yep. so that makes sense i think i think that's a good solution so yeah and i can use a little exercise anyway yeah <laughs> well <clears throat> i think the only thing left is just to watch it work maybe we can haul something up here you got a few things downstairs that need yes. to come up here yeah i got uh, a load all right a variety of stuff that needs to come up so all right well let's run something up here Uh, nice. That's the way it was made to work. Uh, Here's the cord to the generator. I think we got a load. Yeah, that looks good. All clear. So I tried to make the first thing I knew, hook up the safety chain. <clears throat> I usually keep a two wheel cart up here and one downstairs. Uh, makes it handy. Yeah. Make it look like I'm doing I think you're gonna make a lot of people jealous. Yeah, that <laughs> yeah, works well, it's certain. Moved a lot, everything that's up there pretty much came up on that elevator. And... When they had the shop built, they just lived a mile away from here. And you brought everything over and you kind of staged it downstairs. And Rick waited until they had the elevator built to put anything upstairs. So that way he didn't get stuff up there in his way and he was able to build the shelves and get it all established and then took everything up there. But I know I'm jealous of it. I keep thinking I want to do this in my barn where I have to use the backhoe to lift things up in there. Yeah. This would be way easier. So. Yeah. Uh, a couple of things I did want to mention, you know, if you decide to use any of the ideas from this, proceed at your own risk, right? Nobody's an engineer here or has any kind of that type of background. So it's, like, right? it's not OSHA approved. <laughs> Just cargo and something you have to just use good common sense and make sure everyone's clear. And I looked at a few videos on YouTube and they were using fall arresters, which is like a ratcheting, a ratcheting cord that you can attach up top and it'll come down with the, with the elevator platform. And if something would break away or fail, it'll catch it. It works just like a seat belt. So those are pretty cheap to pick up and 
I might check into them. Yeah. Yeah. Not, I didn't know about those, and that'd be a good idea. So, a fall arrester coupled with this, and I, I would feel really confident about it. So. Yeah. Okay. Well, thanks a lot for showing us. Sure. Hope you got a kick out of it. I want to thank you so much for clicking on this video. And if I'm lucky, I will see you on the next one. All right. Take care. Does mom know which one? Oh, I thought it was maybe one of mine, but it's either. Looks like something. Yeah, I would draw. I feel like I remember it's drawing Eva's. that watering can. It's either. Does it say anywhere? I was gonna. Okay. It looks very vaguely familiar. Bobby, that's really good. <laughs> Why, thank you. I love your little roses. I can't draw any better than that today. So. <laughs> you, you got see? to the grade level, or you got to eight years old. Yeah, and, and that's my, oh, I maxed so out. Cute. I was gonna say, I'm like, Funny. I don't remember drawing my people like that. I remember. 1939 four. 39. It's up for sale. Yes, as a matter of fact, rebuild engine. Yes. It's a nine N, right? Yes. Yep. Frame and front loader. Done a lot of work for me over the last 35 years. Yes, I bet. The old 9N got traded. Yeah. This one's kind of <laughs> has its pluses. So is the Porsche for sale? No.